Well, I'm sad to report that that old saw is true. You should never meet your heroes because you discover they have feet of clay. Uh, when I was growing up, NASA was one of my heroes, and Boeing was too. And now NASA and Boeing are working together, and to be perfectly honest with you folks, I'm not impressed. Hi, everybody. I'm Bill Little here with Steve Green and Scott Ott, and this particular right angle is about the uh, Starliner that the Boeing company has uh, made for NASA. Uh, it was supposed to launch as we record this on Tuesday. On Monday, it was scrub, uh, scrubbed for a week. It's next scheduled for Friday, as again, as we record this. I suspect it'll be scrubbed again after that. Uh, gentlemen, uh, I have to be very careful about how I put this because not only do I not want to be misunderstood by other people, I just want to be clear about this internally. I certainly would not, for the, for the slightest moment, wish any harm upon that crew or, or any anybody else involved with this mission at all. But having given this serious thought, I don't want this to succeed. I don't think it's going to succeed. And even if it does, I don't want it to. And the reason is because this combination of what NASA has become and what Boeing has become is is a combination of two agencies that were once committed to excellence and for a long, 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 long time have become standing armies of bureaucracies that cut corners and got people killed. And uh, and I don't think they deserve to succeed, not just from a moral point of view, but from a progress point of view. Uh, Steve, let's start with you. If You, uh, you can see here a, a split screen of the uh, Boeing Starliner compared to the uh, SpaceX Dragon capsule. The Dragon capsule looks like it was made in the 21st century, and, and last time I checked, that's where we're living. The uh, Boeing Starliner <laughs> looks like it was assembled from spare parts somewhere around 1985 or something in that neighborhood. Hmm. Likewise, the Boeing spacesuit, which is an improvement over the old space shuttle suit, looks kind of frumpy and out of date compared to what SpaceX is doing. And all of this to say, Steve, that... A number of people, not just me, a number of space enthusiasts for a long time have been saying since the retirement of the space shuttle, if not earlier, earlier. That, that NASA needs to get out of the manned spaceflight business, that a government bureaucracy is not the way to go. The FAA does not build airplanes and, and fly people around the country on, on FAA-constructed and, and, and regula <laughs> uh, rather uh, operated uh, commercial vehicles, because if the FAA was in charge of civil aviation, Steve, the way NASA's in charge of space flight, we'd be flying from New York to Los Angeles in a four-engine propeller-driven airplane that was flying at 12,000 feet and would get you there in nine and a half hours and would cost $6,000 per ticket. Hmm. Um, NASA, I think, needs to go back to being what it used to be, which was the National Advisory Committee on Aeronautics, which was a pure research institute. It would, it would spend a, a, an enormous amount of time and effort developing different kinds of airfoils, which one of these are more effective and so on. NASA's work with unmanned space probes and things like the Hubble Space Telescope and the James Webb Telescope have been absolutely mind-bogglingly brilliant. So and, and there is no private way to fund those kind of things. And that NASA deserves the, the, the praise that it, it, that it gets. But NASA, as a as a uh, travel agent for traveling into space, booking uh, and and paying for equipment like the the Boeing Starliner, I think is is uh, one giant leap backwards for mankind. Yeah, uh, boy, just just get to the numbers for a sec. There are a lot of things I want to talk about, but I want to get this out of the way. NASA's budget, I think, is about twenty twenty two million dollars. And honestly, if they want to get to the moon by twenty thirty. Uh, with Artemis, and we'll get, I suspect we'll get to Artemis here shortly. Um, they really need a budget of about $30 billion. And the money just isn't there, except it is. I mean, Biden will, you know, blow $300 billion uh, for giving student loans, which means, you know, the rest of us get to pay for it. Uh, we've got jillion D dollars at a time for, for infrastructure that doesn't actually build any roads or dams or bridges or airports. Um, but we, we can't scrape up an extra $8 billion to get to the moon. It's all about priorities. And there's just, there, there's not enough graft in, in going to the moon, I guess. Um, Bill, I'm glad you mentioned uh, Starliner versus Dragon and, and Dragon Crew, because when you, you mentioned the, in between segments today, when you mentioned just how ugly and ill-fitting Starliner was. Well, you know, I, maybe he's right about that. So I pulled up a bunch of images of, of, of Starliner. Wow, that's that's even worse than I remember. And then I thought, <laughs> wait, wait, I, I, I got to wash, I got to wash this 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 taste out of my brain. So I opened another image search for uh, Dragon Crew, 
And mm. I realized what the difference is between the two, Bill. You were, you were so close. Dragon Crew looks like it came from Stanley Kubrick's 2001 A Space Odyssey. Yeah. And uh, Starliner looks like it came from Roger Corman's Battle Beyond the Stars. <laughs> Okay, well, that's about as well said as it you, possibly could be. Yeah, you'll never convince me I'm wrong on that because that's that's exactly what it is. Um, and I read an article. Actually, no, I'm sorry, I didn't. I still haven't finished it on uh, Ars Technica a couple of days ago. Uh, I've got the uh, the headline here. They uh, they said the surprise is not that Boeing lost commercial crew. Uh, in other words, that uh, that. Um, SpaceX beat them to the punch by by getting Dragon Crew up and working while Starliner, you know, goes in and out of the the vehicle assembly building without ever flying. Um, the surprise they said is that they finished it at all. Is that they actually got the capsule built and maybe ready for flight? Who who the heck knows at this point? And it it takes me back to this thinking that that NASA seems to be stuck in. They, they used to say during the 1950s and 60s, and maybe during the 70s too, in, in the corporate world, that nobody ever got fired for buying IBM. In other words, there were mainframe computers you could buy that weren't IBM, but the IBM would show up in their identical blue suits and their identical white shirts and their identical skinny ties, and they would install a computer that would work. It might not be the latest or the greatest or anything like that, but it was IBM, and it, and it worked. And... Companies that got stuck in that mindset became the dinosaurs, while uh, while companies like Compaq and and shoot even <laughs> Apple and Commodore were, were you know the scurrying little mammals going around eat, right. eating all their 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 eggs up. Um, and this is this is what happened to to NASA. I'm afraid they got in this mindset of nobody ever got fired for buying Boeing. Well, that Boeing doesn't exist anymore. That that Boeing hasn't existed since the uh, since the merger with McDonnell Douglas, um, that has been quite a while now. And we're finally seeing the results of the airline industry, the space industry too, tend to move so slowly. I mean, the 737 is a great jet, but you know, they've been building it for, for more than 50 years now. Um, so things change very slowly. Well, things have finally changed enough in the last 20 plus years since the, uh, since the merger with McDonnell Douglas, whose corporate culture is just absolutely toxic. It, it poisoned Boeing. It's been enough time since then that we're finally seeing the real results of that toxicity seeping throughout the Boeing culture. And so you get spaceships that don't go to space. You get airliners that uh, one of the engineers, the 787 Dreamliner, says he won't fly on. Um, it's bad news all around, Bill. And the reason is that stale thinking that comes with government dollars. And you're absolutely right. The way to do that, get rid of the government dollars. You got to privatize it. And we might add two Boeing whistleblowers have died under mysterious circumstances. That is not evidence that there was a uh, foul play, but yeah. given their age and the and the uh, sudden onset of their illness uh, relative to when their testimonies came out, it certainly doesn't raise my confidence level any. Yeah. Um, Scott, the put aside the the archaic looking capsule and 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 that that skirt, which is you know apparently designed to protect the bottom end of the thing. I'm I'm an amateur aerodynamicist, but I've got to got to look at that thing is definitely creating some kind of drag it's yeah. it's not helping the rocket uh let's talk for a minute about the uh the other uh nasa uh government program the artemis program which is steve steve pointed out it's the first person i ever heard really say it out loud had the amazing innovation of taking the only reusable part of the space shuttle program mainly the most Im engineering intensive part the main engines and come up with a plan to use those engines and throw them away into the atlantic ocean <laughs> We had a um, we had an Artemis unmanned flight that seems like it was two or three years ago. It's probably not quite that long. Uh, Steve also told me that they can't fly the next Artemis until they pick a, a, a part off of the Artemis that did fly and put it into the other part of Artemis. Hmm. And 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 listen, there's an animation I can show a little clip of it here that shows um, that shows uh, SpaceX's operational tempo in 2010 versus its operational tempo. Uh, at the end of 2023. And by the time you get to 2023, it, the, it, it just looks like bottle rockets. I, I mean, like a Roman candle. Just foom, 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 foom. Heavy, foom, 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 foom. Heavy, heavy, foom, 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 foom. 
SpaceX is showing NASA what it can do. And I don't think most people realize that SpaceX is being horrifically slowed down by the National Aeronautics and Space Administration, whose purpose now is to keep people out of space because they have made a huge investment in these obsolete programs and they are hobbling the people that are doing things a new and, and innovative way out, out of what appears to me to be just sheer embarrassment. Yeah, I think NASA's new slogan is keeping space safe for the aliens. I mean, we don't want to go up there and clutter it all no. up with human adventures. Uh, uh, it's I, When I saw the explanation from, I, I'm not sure if he was a NASA or a Boeing executive, but the, this bald guy gave an explanation for why they had to scrub Tuesday's launch of the Starliner. And uh, it seemed very clear to me that he was trying to make it sound like it was no big deal, uh, that it was just this little valve, and he likened it to something that was in your water heater. And I, I thought, wow, this huge, expensive, long-awaited project was held up by something that your plumber could have fixed? I mean, that was like, <laughs> you get the sense that, uh, that, that Boeing and NASA can't even handle the little things. Now, I'm glad- On, on the Atlas rocket, which yeah. the first Atlas flew in, in uh, 1961 yeah, it's, as a man's space It's not like it's a, it's a brand new product. Not like it's yeah. brand new, yeah. Yeah, so, um, and it does kind of, as Steve pointed out, that uh, the uh, Starline or does have kind of a steampunk look about it. I feel like there should be like there should be a flywheel somewhere. It yeah, does, it looks yeah a little external propeller to drive the yeah, electrical system. They or kind of yeah, need yeah, yeah. to paint it dark and coppery colored. Uh, that would be even cooler. Um, but you know, to me, if if the government, the federal government, is going to be involved in space, it should be primarily number one for defense. Uh, that is a key obligation of the federal government, and defense should be the number one objective. Number two, probably, is for intelligence purposes. That's a reason why the federal government should be involved in space. Number three is probably, as you hinted, Bill, is basic science. Um, and, and maybe there's a role kind of like the FAA of keeping rockets from colliding with each other. Um, or, you know. or landing on people's houses. <laughs> yes, exactly. Reasonably. Yes. And so, uh -huh. so all of that seems reasonable to me. The more entangled they become in the actual building and launching of rockets, however, I think that not only it's going to slow the pace, but I get what you're saying about I, I don't want this to su succeed because I think it sends a bad signal to the world. Um, and I think what we need to do basically is we need to shirk off uh, finally the legacy of John F. Kennedy. There was a time mm -hmm. for that. We needed that maybe at the moment. Um, it was different circumstances. And, uh, and honestly, it was primarily driven by defense. It was the Cold War Manhattan yes. Project. Yes. So uh, there was a reason for that. The Kennedy era is over. That's not. That was a, a moment in time where we needed to do that. We do not need to be about doing that now. Again, unless we're talking about we're actually trying to to build weaponry or defensive uh, laser beams or whatever it is you're going to do from space. Um, and so. For the rest of it, I want to see as many space companies as possible. So yeah, I want I want companies like Boeing to be involved, but I don't want them to be you know locked arm in arm with the federal government and uh, not only being slowed down by that whole process, but also uh, becoming less efficient because of the largesse that just flows out of the government. I think they need to go back to more of a scrappy skunk works kind of environment where they are forced to, to improvise. They're forced to have a, a kind of launch cadence like SpaceX does uh, because you know the SpaceX launch cadence is really driven by economy. And the fact that they're reusing boosters and fairing halves is all driven by economy. It's like, we want to be able to do this over and over and over again because we're going to Mars. And in order to go to Mars, it's going to cost a lot of money. So we need to make as much of this stuff reusable as possible, and we need to get good at it through repetition. And Boeing is not doing either one of those things. Um, I, I hope that these astronauts have a very successful launch when they finally take off. I hope the Artemis mission successfully does stuff on the moon, but then I hope we sunset that as quickly as possible and let the private sector drive the bus. Yes, government is going to be paying for freight and crews to fly on these rockets, but I think we need to have more competition in that sector, not less, and less government involvement, not more. 
Yeah, if 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 the if NASA continues on with the Artemis program, I suspect they might eventually get there and they'll be met on the surface by a couple of guys in a in a red Tesla convertible electric car, <laughs> drive them back to the uh, SpaceX hotel where they can have a nice shower and and maybe play the slots for a while. Um, <laughs> Look, I started this by saying it is not a pleasant experience to, to discover that your that your gods have feet of clay. Mm. Um, my my entire first half of my life was NASA was the the agency that that showed the world how to do everything, and that Boeing was the manufacturer of the best aircraft in the world, and that its culture was based on excellence. Those uh, both of those entities are long gone, and since they're long gone, they deserve to disappear. The reason I don't want this mission to succeed, I, I cannot say this often enough, I do not want a catastrophe, I don't want anything to happen to, to crew or, or anybody, but the reason I don't want it to succeed is because it will be an excuse for them to pour more money yeah. down this, this, this program that is taking us backwards. There is a place for NASA in addition to the things that Scott mentioned. He was absolutely right, by the way, to mention defense, intelligence, uh, and exploration. But Really, what NASA should be doing is you cannot expect a government agency to innovate. However, a government agency can, in fact, referee innovation. And if you were to take the money that was spent on one launch of the Starliner or one $4 billion launch of Artemis and put out $4 billion worth of prizes for independent companies to start up their own unique technologies, then you would have a real actual serious attempt to make into space. SpaceX has shown what one company with a visionary leader can do. Uh, I don't want them to be a monopoly. I think there should be many companies that are competing for SpaceX's uh, a slice of the pie, but they're not coming from above. They should be coming from below. They should be companies that are out SpaceXing SpaceX. They are doing things in a more innovative way, in a more uh, remarkable way. But right now, NASA's job is to slow down the pace of human exploration of space. And there's no question that that is true. And it's time for it to stop. Go back to doing what you're good at. There is no private uh, funding for something like the James Webb Space Telescope. There's nobody's going to put up hmm. that, the billions of dollars necessary for that. That is an appropriate, limited expense that a government like ours can afford to do. And that is, is, is to push back the frontiers of knowledge with, with some of these big science projects. But otherwise, get out of the way, because I don't like rooting against NASA, and I don't like rooting against Boeing, but you've both brought it upon yourselves. You're both responsible for this. Neither one of you organizations are what they used to be. You both decided to change them for reasons that are unknown to me, but it's no longer a collection of the best engineers in the world. Now it's a collection of the most effective bureaucrats in the world in both cases, and I would like to see this... Uh, this this uh, spawn of Satan <laughs> marriage between the government running the transportation system. We saw that with the space shuttle. We went round in the same circle that John Glenn did for 30 years, and we've wasted enough time. Let's get going. For Steve Green and Scott Ott, I'm Bill Whittle. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time right here on Right Angle.